in this lecture we will be seeing the working of direct frequency modulator circuits and this particular working these particular modulators are the direct fm modulators somewhere in the earlier lectures we have seen the indirect fm modulator wherein we are generating the fm signal from the pm signal but here we will be generating our direct fm signal direct fm means the instantaneous frequency is directly proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal and that is why these particular modulators are called as direct fm modulator so when the frequency of the carrier signal is varied directly with the modulating signal and therefore instantaneous frequency deviation is directly proportional to the amplitude of modulation signal so whatever circuit which we will see in this lecture we have to keep a track of this particular sentence wherein we are saying that instantaneous frequency deviation is directly proportional to amplitude of the modulating signal now under this direct fm modulator we will be able to see two types of modulator one is called as vector diode modulator another is called as fm reactance modulator before starting any of this modulator vector diode or fm reactor modulator this is the classification chart react direct method may we have reactance modulator and vector diode modulator indirect may we had armstrong method you can see another lecture video lecture for the armstrong method before starting with any type let us understand the principle of direct fm modulator with the help of this diagram now in this diagram you are able to see uh, there is one sound source which is acting as a modulating signal which is which is coming from some device and some transducer trans uh, some transducer and this particular sound source which is nothing but our modulating signal or the information signal is given to a tank circuit or a tune circuit or a resonance circuit which is connected a uh, tune circuit which is having a component of inductor and capacitor so this sound source is coming from a microphone and inductor and capacitor is acting as a tank circuit which is going to determine the frequency so this particular two components are the frequency determining components the output of this particular tank circuit is given to a lc oscillator and then output of lc oscillator will be the direct fm so what is important here to study when the modulating signal that is when the sound source amplitude is changing or its intensity is changing what will happen is the frequency of this particular tank circuit will change and therefore this particular tank circuit is connected somewhere with the lc oscillator because of that the frequency of lc oscillator will also be changing so how this and then because of that the direct fm output is produced so we have to look that how this frequency of lc oscillator is changing it is changing because of the magnitude or the amplitude of the sound source which we call it as instantaneous frequency deviation so whatever statement which we have made earlier that output is directly proportional to the instantaneous uh, instantaneous frequency is directly proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal and here modulating signal is the sound source so the deviation frequency deviation will be determined by this tank circuit the rest frequency which we also call it as carrier frequency that will be decided by this lc oscillator and this particular frequency of lc oscillator is deviated by this particular tank circuit frequency and this deviation happens because of the amplitude of the sound source so there is a complete chain when the amplitude of the sound source changes the l and c frequency is going to change because it is a tank circuit this particular frequency will produce some deviation which we call it as instantaneous frequency deviation and this deviation is either plus delta f or minus delta f that is going to be added to fc so output will be fc plus delta f or fc minus delta f depending on the sound source amplitude is increasing or decreasing so this is direct f 
frame modulator. So whatever two circuits which we will see, vector diode modulator and reactance modulator, we have to think about where is the LC oscillator or where is the oscillator which is going to produce a rest frequency, which is a carrier frequency without modulating signal. And then you have to look which are the components which is going to form a tank circuit which is going to change the frequency of the LC oscillator or a frequency of a crystal oscillator or the rest oscillator. So the concept is FC will be generated when no modulating signal output will be FC. When the modulating signal comes then deviation will be produced and that deviation will be added or subtracted to the carrier frequency. So, the first circuit which we are going to see under the direct FM modulator is the vector diode FM modulators and vector diode means we will understand first the principle of working of vector diode. So, you can see the vector diode is nothing but our PN junction diode. So, this is P type material, N type material. When they are combining, there will be a depletion region form and that depletion region we are calling it as a non-conduction region and on both the side of non-conduction region we have conduction region. This is the symbol of the vector diode which will be there somewhere in the circuit. Now let us understand working of this vector diode. So somewhere we are looking for this particular tank circuit through this particular vector diode operation. So when the low voltage is applied again one point to remember here the vector diode will always work in the reverse bias. So when the low voltage is applied means anode is connected to negative, cathode is positive. Because of that, there will be a narrow non-conducting region. Means somewhere low voltage means it is going towards forward bias and because of that, the depletion region width will be narrower. That is the distance between the two conducting regions. So how this diode is formed? There is a conducting region here which is acting as one plate of capacitor, conducting region here which is acting as another plate of capacitor and because and they are separated by a non-conducting region which is acting as a dielectric. So there will be a capacitance which will be formed. So when low voltage is applied, the conducting region is narrower, distance between the two plates of the capacitor will be reducing and because of that capacitance. How capacitance will increase? We have to look at this formula. P is equal to epsilon A by D. So when the distance between the plate reduces, the capacitance increases. On the other hand, when the high voltage is applied, high means increased voltage is applied, the depletion region will become wider. Means it is going towards reverse bias. Reverse bias may depletion region will become wider. Distance between the plates of the capacitor will increase. Means this D will increase and because of that capacitance will reduce. So This is the principle of operation of vector diode which will be helpful in our circuit. So again this particular diagram is explaining the working of vector diode with modulating signal. So here you can see there is a modulating signal here. This is the symbol of vector diode. So when the voltage increases, voltage increases means when the modulating signal voltage increases, capacitance decreases and that we have proved in the previous slide. Low voltage means modulating signal voltage is increasing and the capacitance because of that is decreasing and when and cap when capacitance decreases, we know the relationship between capacitance and frequency. They are inversely proportional, so frequency will increase. So when the voltage increases, frequency increases. On the other side, when the voltage decreases, the capacitance increases and because of that, the frequency will decrease. So here we are getting direct relation. Here, when the frequency increases, volt when the voltage increases, frequency increases means a frequency deviation is directly proportional to the amplitude of modulating signal and because of that this is called as direct FM modulators. Now let us have the circuit diagram for the vector diode modulator. This particular circuit is somewhere familiar to you which is nothing but our transistor uh, amplifier circuit wherein you can see this is a transistor which is our NPN transistor. R1, R2 are the voltage divider biasing given for the transistor. 
modulating signal is applied to the base of the transistor which is going to control the conduction here the tank circuit which we were talking previously that tank circuit is going to be formed by this vector diode and a inductor you can see here vector diode will act as a capacitor inductor will act as a inductor will act as a, a tank circuit element and these two are going to form a tank circuit and this tank circuit is going to change the frequency of crystal oscillator means what is the meaning the rest frequency is decided by the crystal oscillator rest means when no modulating signal is applied what will be the output the output will be the crystal frequency whatever will be the crystal oscillator generate that is our carrier frequency and when the modulating signal is applied according to this particular principle when the modulating signal is applied means high voltage the capacitance will be lesser because of that frequency will be high when low voltage is applied the capacitance will be more and because of that the frequency will be lesser and this particular voltage is applied at the base of this particular transistor there are coupling capacitors connected at the input at the output and this particular is the radio frequency choke which is working and again to mark here the vd1 is nothing but our vector diode which is working in the reverse bias more voltage a more reverse bias voltage is going to increase the depletion region width and because of that the frequency depletion region width increases and because of that distance between the plate increases capacitance is going to decrease and because of that frequency will increase so this is nothing but the vector diode modulator wherein this l and a capacitance of vector diode is going to determine the frequency deviation and that is proportional to amplitude of the modulating signal and that is why this is called as direct fm direct frequency modulator wherein the instantaneous frequency is directly proportional instantaneous frequency deviation is directly proportional to amplitude of the modulating signal and the rest frequency that is carrier frequency will be decided by crystal and this crystal frequency is going to be deviated on positive side or negative side with the help of tank circuit so overall principle which we have described with this diagram remains same here lc oscillator is there in that circuit diagram crystal is there here capacitor and inductor is there there in that diagram capacitor is going to be vector diode inductor is already present and then it is going to decide the deviation and that deviation is going to be proportional to modulating signal now if we see the formula for the frequency so when the modulating signal is not going to be applied that time the frequency is 1 upon 2 pi under root of lc okay and this frequency is called as carrier rest frequency inductance of the primary winding that is your l is the inductance is the vector diode capacitance and when the frequency is going to applied that time what will change capacitance will change and because of that the frequency is going to change so formula is 1 upon 2 pi under root of l into c plus delta c what is this delta c it is the new value of capacitance that is delta c is the change in the vector diode capacitance due to the change in the modulating signal so when this capacitance change the frequency will change and that is what we are calling it as a instantaneous frequency deviation so in vector diode modulator we are taking the help of vector diode as a capacitor and that capacitance is going to change the frequency and that particular capacitance will change in accordance with the modulating signal and that is why it is called as direct fm modulators in the next lecture we will be able to see another direct fm modulator which is called as jfet reactance modulator